Well, 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 the Philadelphia Eagles 2024 schedule is out. And there is a lot to go over here. This is going to be a different video, guys, because I'm not going to be the typical the typical guy that's just going to give you the record. Look, at the end of the day, look, look, look. You guys know how, at least you know what I'm thinking about this team. I think this team will go far. I think on paper, it's fantastic. But the ground is not made of Twizzlers and the clouds are not made of whipped cream, okay? I can't live in la-la land when it comes to this team, okay? Maybe some fans do. I want to give the pros and cons of this schedule, obviously compared to last year as well, okay? I want to kind of go through the schedule in a different way because, yes, I'm going to go over the wins, losses, what I think, the typical stuff that we all do, and we all look at it that way because that's what we're looking at. Where are the wins? Where are the losses? Yes, I get it. But I want to go through this schedule through two different per perspectives, okay? One, as an Eagles fan, going to these games. Number two, the perspective, the strategy of this team from the start of the schedule to the end of the schedule, and what are the differences there, and is there a chance, okay? Now, before I give you more information, when we go over, we'll go over all, every opponent very fast, very quick. We'll go through it, and then the information I'll give you on some other things, okay, regarding the schedule. So, long intro, but um, here we go. Before I go over this schedule for the Philadelphia Eagles, I just want to say to everybody that, you know, this, I got a bad taste in my mouth after last year and what happened. And, you know, I can't get excited about a schedule as much as other people can because I have to take this into realism mode on a lot of different aspects of this team and where it's going. You can have the best offseason, the best free agency, the best draft in the world. It's coming down to this coaching at the end of the day. Okay, and there's, if you think my record predictions over 12 to 13 wins or more than that, it probably is up there because the Eagles have always had the roster, the youth movement on defense, Vic Fangio giving this defense an actual structure now than we've ever had in the past. And offensively, we've had the talent there. We just never have pulled it out. From this coaching staff. Okay. And that is what is riding on these things. So that's why this, this video is going to be a lot more different. Because it's just not going to be the typical stuff that you hear every single day on a record prediction. But I will give you the typical stuff. But I have to throw in some of other things as well that make a lot of sense. And I'm, I'm not going through what I went through last year. I'm more of a demanding fan this year. I'm going to be very crucial of this coaching staff and these players this year. I mean, I'm going to be on their shit list this year. So be prepared because... I'm not in fucking La La Land right now. I'm not. I, I'm. I'm not. I, if I see things, I'm gonna. I'm gonna say it. <laughs> it's just that's just how I am. So I want to get into this schedule record prediction and kind of go through. You know, what are we looking at down the road as an Eagles fan? Okay. Now, obviously, the Brazil game week one. Okay. I never. I never like this. Now, the only good thing about this is it's Friday night, so everybody that has to work the next day doesn't have to go to work, which is fantastic. But uh, this counts as an Eagles home game, which really sucks. Uh, so, um, you know, I think it's going to be a very good matchup. The first game of the season for every team is always a toss up because the teams that are supposed to win no normally don't win the first week because sometimes you're not. You know, it's your first. Real game in, in, in weeks, you know what I mean? So since preseason, a lot of starters haven't played a lot of preseason. They're not starting every preseason game, and they've lessened the preseason game. So it's really a toss-up. Uh, but, you know, to see where, you know, not really where, you know, you want to see where your team is at by the first game. But sometimes, you know, teams will take longer. It'll take a couple weeks, you know, until you get into the groove of things. So um, I think it's a win for the Philadelphia Eagles. So I feel really good about it. Week two, September 16th, 815 Monday Night Football against 
Um, Kirk Cousins and the Atlanta Falcons, obviously big moment for Kirk Cousins and never seems to succeed at those moments. So I feel like that's going to be a win. Uh, week three, September 22nd, away at New Orleans, 1 o'clock p.m. Damn, already a 1 o'clock game. It's about damn time. How many 1 o'clock games did we have last year? Like, what, three? <laughs> I mean, it wasn't much. I've, I mean, Jesus, I, I sometimes you want these early games. And, and me, I love early games. And when you have prime time is always fun. But you always have to stay up late on the nights you don't want to stay up late, and sometimes you can. And you know, sometimes it's just it's a hassle at times. So I think that's a win. Um, yeah, win, win. <laughs> so week four, September 29th, uh, at Tampa Bay, Devin White gets to see his old team. You know, get some payback a little bit. Um, but you know, we faced them early last season, won, and then faced them in the playoffs on our downfall and lost. So get a little payback there would be really nice. Week five is a bye week. This is horrible. <laughs> I think we all know this. Now, obviously, with a weaker schedule, you get a bad bye week. Okay, the harder your schedule is, the better bye week you're going to get. The, the more easy your schedule is, the worse you're going to get. And I would say, I don't know how early the Eagle, you know, what is the early bye week that, the league can give a team. I'm not really sure, but this is, I mean, this is pretty damn early. Um, so an early buy, not what we want to see. So a week of really nothing and, and, you know, resting guys, God forbid, who knows? We might be saying by week four, thank God we have this bye week, you know, maybe a certain player, you know, knock on wood gets injured or something like that. Um, so yeah, the bye week is not really in my favor too much. Then we are home against the uh, against the Browns, Jim Schwartz, and that defense, October 13th, 1 p.m. Um, another 1 o'clock game. That's three 1 o'clock games already, which is absolutely amazing. So I'm really glad we're starting to get these. Uh, we're starting to get these early games, um, you know, right from the right from the right from the start of this whole thing. Um, so week seven, week eight, week nine, week seven, our first division matchup against the New York Giants away at MetLife, October 20th, one o'clock, another one o'clock game for the Eagles. Saquon Barkley going to New York, you know, let's, let's shut the crowd up a little bit. I think that's definitely a win. Um, you know, you go, you go to Cincinnati, the Cincinnati Bengals, um, October 27th, 425. That's, that's great. That's going to be a good matchup. Joe Burrow, um, you know, we'll see what happens there, but, you know, potentially could, could be a loss there, but I think they do win in this matter. Cause I think they will get to him. Um, you know, and hopefully, uh, the secondary will, will pick him off a few times. So we'll see. Um, the Jacksonville Jaguars, week nine at home, November 3rd. This is a Sunday night football game. And, you know, Dougie P in Philadelphia is going to be always a great thing for him. Um, you're coming back home. We love him to death, but, you know, he's got to lose that game. And, uh, you know, the, the Jags have been loading up the past couple seasons on this roster. I'm not a big fan of Trevor Lawrence. I don't think he's one of the best quarterbacks. I don't think he's going to turn to anything they want him to be. I think the Eagles are going to. Uh, have new pick city all over, um, you know, that that Jaguars offense. I think you come up with a win there. Now going to week 10, 11, 12, you have finally the Dallas Cowboys week 10. Not a primetime game, November 10th. That's a 425 game, which is great. So I think they uh, win there. Uh, then you're home against Washington, another division rival right there, November 14th, 8, 15 p.m., Thursday night football. Um, you know, so, so kind of, uh, kind of crazy. Um, so you're going to have, this is your first time now where you're going to have a short week. You're going to have a really short week at that point. Um, Cowboys on Sunday, 425, then two divisional matchups in a week, which, which really sucks. <laughs> so the only good thing about it is like, I'm trying to even figure out there's a good thing about it. There's no good thing about it at all. Uh, especially when you have to get these divisional wins as well. So, um, but you know, it is what it is. You're going to have to deal with that. Last year we had an early week. We had like a two game week early. So we kind of knocked that out of the way pretty early, um, in the season last year, but you kind of get this a uh, little bit down the road. So, you know, a short week divisional matchup and, you know, kind of sucks. So, I'm hoping the Eagles do win that, and they should. You know, Washington is a big question mark right now. New coaching staff, new quarterback, new team. You know, they had over $95 million to spend free agency. I mean, Washington just literally started from the ground up. They got rid of a, a lot of some of their other players last year during the season for some draft capital. 
Um, so this one for me, because Washington is just such a Washington is, is such a question mark. I think the Eagles should win this because they're just experienced together better by this time. The Eagles should have their identity and they should be playing better at this point. So I feel good about it. Um, you know, week 12, you have the LA Rams away in LA, November 24th, uh, H20. This is Sunday night football. So you have from Thursday night with Washington to Sunday night. So you get an extra three days of rest. So that's like a, like a mini from week 11 to week 12. It's like a mini bye week. So that's great. So they get like, if you got some guys that are banged up a little bit, you could rest them for, you could rest them. What? Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then start practicing Monday. I mean, you could, or if they need more time and you're not, you're not really caring about them practicing too much and you know they're going to get beyond their stuff, you can rest them a lot more. So they get a little bit of a mini buy, a few days more extra rest between week 11 from a Thursday night game to a Sunday night game. So it works out pretty well there. So I actually, actually do like those types of weeks. Helps out the team, especially when you have an early buy like the Eagles. Um, Week 13, 14, and 15. Week 13, December 1st in Baltimore. Okay, 425. This is going to be a good game. It's going to be a tough game, but I think uh, the Eagles could lose this. The Eagles, by the end of the year, could. They get into December. Maybe they don't play as fantastic. I think this is one of my schedule-type losses for this team. Um, you know, so we'll see what happens there. Week 14, uh, Carolina Panthers. So I'll just say that. Um, not high on their quarterback, and I don't know. Um, I mean, the Panthers are the only team, schedule-wise, the only team that does not have a primetime game. Carolina has no primetime game this year, which, that, that I mean, that, maybe that's better for them and their fans, maybe. Um, so, I don't think Carolina is going to be anything uh, interesting um, this year. Has gotten better roster-wise a little bit, but I, I don't think they make a step forward to beat the Eagles. Definitely not. Uh, week 15. Home against the Pittsburgh Steelers, December 15th, 425. So you're coming up on, you know, a, a lot of 425 games after the bye week, which is which is kind of nuts. Um, so uh, like, like that matchup, if the Eagles pull that one out, so I'm not really worried about that too much. Uh, Washington, again, for the second matchup away in Washington, December 22nd, 1 p.m. game, week 17. Uh, you have against a home against Dallas, another 425 game. There you go. Um, so Dallas, I think you have Dallas twice at 425, which is kind of crazy. So December 29th. And then obviously, as usual, we usually have the Giants the last time, the last game of the year that's always to be determined on the schedule, this front. So, so that's where I'm pretty much at with this schedule. And to be honest with you, there's a lot of interesting things to really take out of it. Um, so the first thing I kind of want to take out of this whole situation is there is no meat of this schedule. There's no meat at all. There's a little bit of potatoes, maybe a piece of rice here and there, but there's, there's no gauntlet here. There's no Miami, Buffalo, Kansas. There's not, there's not a gauntlet of teams. And you know, we were kind of worried about as soon as we hit that Miami game, we got a little worried, but it kind of worked out for the better. You know, we got lucky in a lot of games. Unfortunately, you know, unfortunately we did, and you know, it panned out for us. Um, with some late comebacks, but you don't really, I think as a balance of splitting up even some of the better teams, the best team on this schedule is, is Baltimore. Okay. Baltimore is the best team and you don't face them till December 1st. So this is a, this is, I think a schedule wise from balance and from a, you know, because really when you look at it, the Eagles are like in the, the down, the lower tier middle for an easy schedule. I mean, they're ranked very high for an easy schedule. So, and easy is easy as it says, but can the Eagles actually get together and get this done? We'll see. Uh, but it looks really good though. No gauntlet, really. Um, you have what? Six 1 p.m. games, which are which are pretty good. We only had what, three last year? I mean, come on now. I mean, I was really annoyed. It's It gets really annoying when you have 425 games or just pure primetime games it's just it's just for me it's just way too much way too much um third bit of news is you don't play a team coming off their bye week which that's a huge one because when a team comes off a bye either they're going to be slow and sluggish or they're going to have that extra rest and play at a high level be just have more energy and have that little bit of extra rest definitely helps a team come off a bye facing a team um, you know, from recent year, years from the Eagles, usually when they come off buys, they look very slow at times. Uh, so you're not facing any teams coming off their buy. 
Now, what I can't stand is this, okay? After the bye week, okay? Really after the bye week. From September 16th, you are you don't play a game at home until October 13th. I mean, from a fan perspective, you play in Atlanta. Sorry, you play at home versus Atlanta September 16th, week two. Okay, at 8-15 Monday Night Football. You don't have another home game from September 16th till October 13th, week six. Which is crazy. Which is nuts. Long time. And post bye week, look at how many 425 games the Eagles have. It's a lot, dude. It's 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 a lot. You have one against the Bengals, one against Dallas, one against the Steelers, one against Baltimore, and Dallas again. That's a that's a lot of lot of 425 games. Usually the Eagles will get maybe two of those a year, maybe that much. Um, so I thought that was really interesting. Um they don't have to fly from week 14 to week 18, which is great because when you do too much traveling at the end of the year, you know, it messes with your body clock a little bit. And sometimes players don't play up to their, uh, you know, at you know the top of their game when you're traveling. They don't have to go from the West Coast, you know, to the East, to the West, back to the East for a couple of weeks, then back to the West for the last game. You know what I mean? The Eagles from week 14 down to 18, which is, Panthers, Steelers, Washington Cowboys, um, and Giants. So, you know, they they don't have to fly, which is great. So that's an awesome, that's a huge advantage at the end of the year where you really need to look sharp and you really need to look perfect, okay, by the end of the year. Um, and that's pretty much about it, guys. Like, I think, guys, it's no secret, okay, this team can win a, a shit ton of games, okay? You know what I'm thinking. We know as a fan base, we know that this is a 14 plus win team. Okay. You could say 12 and five. You could say, look, if you even say 12 wins, that's great. 13, 14 is even more better. Okay. They're between 12 and 14 wins. They should have been over 14 wins last year. Okay. This is the issue I'm having here because in a in a perfect world when everything's when everybody's healthy, the coaching staff is 100%. This coaching staff has got to get their shit together because we look at this and say, "Oh, it should be a win, it should be a win." But let me tell you something, man. I take nothing. I I take nothing, okay? I'm not letting anything roll by me anymore. When you say if the Eagles don't dominate on offense for one game this year, I'm telling you, like I'm, there, I'm, I'm so shell shocked from what happened last year. So any little bit of signs of what reminds me of last year, if Sirianni starts getting his hands on the playbook or some stupid shit happens like that, or Fangio's defense is a complete failure this year, yeah, people are gonna tell me to get over it. People, yes, I get it, but like I have to be real about it. To sit up here and tell you the Eagles are gonna have over 14 wins. Or I'm sorry, have at least fourteen. You know, at, you know the most fourteen wins, and to sit back and I don't want to look like an idiot because the perfect prime example of last year what happened. But they weren't playing consistent every week. The Eagles didn't play well last year. Even at ten and one, they weren't playing well. They were sliding by. They were getting lucky. It, it's it's just the truth. It's just the truth. Yes, a lot of credit goes to Jalen Hurts putting the offense on his back when we needed him. You know, the defense getting fourth quarter late sacks when we needed them to, sure. But obviously, teams make mistakes, give the Eagles a lot of opportunity, and the Eagles just were successful coming off of a lot of opportunity from teams' mistakes. That's the name of the game. That's football. That's just the way it is. Okay, so this is a Super Bowl contending team. It's the coaching staff that has to put the final product on the field. Make me believe that they can show, they can give us their identity, that Nick is not going to sneak back into the playbook, has no control over this offense. Both coordinators have full control, at least try to, and do our thing. So schedule-wise, I think it's balanced. I think the Eagles don't have rough opponents. I think... How they look like? If you're saying on paper right now, they should cremate everybody on the on this. 
Baltimore will be the hardest game they have. And Washington is really like, will Washington look better at the end of the year? There's way too many new pieces for Washington to be that successful this year. We don't even, we don't even know if Dan Quinn is even capable of staying as a head coach for his second time around. So I won't take too much out of it. Yeah, maybe they'll split with Dallas at the end of the year because at the Week 17 game at home, they might not play all their starters. The Eagles might have clenched a playoff berth at that point. So they might not play everybody the last couple weeks. So I would say split with Dallas. They lose against Baltimore. You know what I mean? So they could maybe lose in LA, maybe just going to the, you know, being going, you know, traveling to the West side just because of time restraint and and body clock. I mean, that's, these other teams aren't, it's not bad. (laughs) It's, it's a, it's a, it it could be the most, one of the most dominating schedules the Eagles can have. Okay. The Eagles went through a gauntlet last year. Everybody said we couldn't do it. And when we did, it was always, well, the Eagles, did the Eagles win or did, you know, the other team or did the Miami Dolphins didn't play to their full advantage? It's the same shit. And it'll ha- and trust me, it'll happen again. The The way the Eagles are going to play this schedule this year and they will dominate and just say they're dominating all these games, they're going to say, well, the Eagles are not facing anybody competent. The Eagles are not facing a good team this year, you know. So that's just the narrative, unfortunately from everybody that spews BS every single day about the Eagles sometimes. But other than that, guys, that's pretty much it. That was my review on the schedule. Like I said, it, it, it I think it's complimentary. I, you know, the Brazil game, I don't really like too much, but it is what it is. Counts as a home game. It's a Friday night game, you know, whatever. Um, so you end up having, you know, a, a nice, a really five or six, what, one o'clock games, which is fantastic. Six one o'clock games, a bunch of four twenty-five games. So, you know, you got you got a what? How many prime times? You got one, two, three, four. You got four prime time games. How many did they have last year? Five. I think they had five last year. So they get one less prime time game, more early games. Thank God. And for the fans, you know, it sucks from week four, from week three. Sorry, from week two to week. Six that from September 16th to October 13th. That's how long that fans are gonna have to wait to go to a game at home, which really sucks. So I think, uh, you know, coaches get to work and get this done. So I can say I like it. Um, I actually really like it a lot. So other than that, that's pretty much about it. Uh, if you guys haven't checked out the Philly Shakedown podcast merch, please check it out. Got a lot of stuff. Um, we've got some more releases coming out, some big surprises for your guys coming down. But we have the Howie Roseman big pimping shirt. He's pimping. He's ready to go. He's doing his thing. So definitely pre-order uh, that shirt. Link is in the description. Get your flying Frenchman t-shirt. Cooper DeGene with his new number. Fantastic. Get your Axeman 2 merch as well. Or get a Philly Shakedown podcast shirt if you're just supporting, you know, the podcast in general. So, uh, you know, link in the description for all the products. And and I want to say thank you so much. Um, Let me know what you guys think. Look, at the end of the day, guys, like, I I can't stand doing a a, a schedule review type thing. Like, I I like going over the opponents, but I can't stand going going over, you know, how many games are going to win. Because... Last year, we thought it was going to be something different, and it turned out to be something else. I'm hoping that the mistakes were fixed and let them let these guys have a killer off season. You know, we'll be able to tell if this team is going in the right direction or not. Will they get their identity on offense? Will they get their identity in defense? Will these coaches, will hopefully Nick and this front office allow these coaches to do what they need to do and give all these guys control that they deserve? So that's where we're at. Sorry for <clears throat> ranting and sorry for this video being as so long as it is. And um, you guys enjoy the rest of your day. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Pixel up, follow slide. Peace out, guys. Peace.